Welcome to Cinema 5D On The Couch, the talk show with filmmakers and industry leaders. Brought to you by G-Technology, Rode Microphones, Movidium, Red Shark, Film Convert, and FNV. So all three of you are also sometimes shooting video. Uh, when did you guys get into it? Why? And... How was it for you? Because I know a lot of, uh, I mean, we're here at Photokina and uh, talking to a lot of photographers who still have kind of a hard time, you know, that suddenly it's a lot more gear. Mm -hmm. You need more crew. How is that for you guys? Do you try to keep it small when you shoot video or? <laughs> for, well, for me, it was uh, out of necessity to shoot video. It was one of those things where I was working on a lot of projects where it would be a still crew and a film crew. And... Um, I love cinematographers, but we had some bad crews that we worked with, and it was <laughs> like we we're constantly fighting for, for our time with the, either the athletes or um, I shoot for Land Rover. You know, the, we needed the car, and, you know, it's like... So it was this t constant battle, and, I, you know, I s thought, well, you know, first, being a photographer, how hard can it be? <laughs> <laughs> and so I went out, and I, I started shooting a little video and doing my own project, and I think I probably made every single mistake... Uh, mixing frame rates. High and shutter, right? Exactly, high shutter. And I learned a lot and, uh, you know, obviously a ton more to learn, but it was out of necessity that if I could go and I could go to a client and say, well, not only can I fulfill your needs for still images, but also under my production umbrella, we can also do video. And I'm never going to be that super high end uh, looking to do glossy um, commercials. But W there's, a, there's a niche, basically, for producing uh, content, whether it's for social media, uh, for small ad spots, et cetera, et cetera. And if I can control all of that and work, um, not only does it save the client money because they're not hiring two crews, but um, I'm retaining that client and hopefully um, they're getting exactly what they want instead of having two crews fighting for, for different things. And it's more uh, congruent as well for ad campaigns, uh, such as online that then can go to a video because we're on set basically shooting the same things. And I don't shoot them simultaneously, typically. Um, I will shoot one and the other, but the style is uh, complementary, I guess you could say. And uh, it's uh, it's been an interesting journey to say the least. And uh, I find it uh, fascinating because it's almost like, the for me, the first time I picked up a camera. And it was all new and it was all fresh. and learning the nuances of uh, using audio uh, and, 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 and sh you know, lens selection and everything else on the video side and how will you tell a story uh, in motion uh, because uh, a motion shot uh, doesn't always translate to what a still would be. I always use the analogy. For instance, you're doing a, a, a job for North Face and they're doing a running spot. Um, you'd never take a picture of somebody's foot going in a puddle, right? A still shot, it'd be totally boring, and, and you wouldn't know what to do. But in, in the, that motion shot of the, the, the foot going through, maybe slow motion, water coming off, maybe it really gives a sense of place, and, and you gives it context. And, and so having um, those two different brains, and it's been a, um, an interesting journey to figure out and storyboard the stills and or the, the video. Yeah, and have you found that, I talked about that with a photographer today, that it's, it's probably hard for a photographer to realize that everything is moving all the time and that you, you're not planning for that one shot. You're not mm -hmm. planning this perfect thing because you always have to keep in mind the camera is moving mm -hmm. or the subject might be moving. You know, there's no reason for you know, stressing up this corner because the camera would be moving from here to there, um, stuff like that. And also planning for the next shot because editing is something completely new for photographers, mm -hmm. I guess, you know, like thinking in sequences, thinking in different uh, frame sizes as mm -hmm. well. Uh, we sort of think in series, we don't think in sequence. So we'll be like, oh, I'm gonna do this shot there and that's just gonna be one still there. And then I'm gonna move over there and we'll probably do another one over there. Whereas if, as opposed to you guys who are gonna go, right, we're gonna start there and then we're gonna move all the way through it. Now that's not how I think. I mean, it might be how other guys think, but you know, to be honest, I'm gonna go off on a little rant here. and I'm probably gonna say what everyone's thinking. I can see everyone kind of go, oh God. Um, <laughs> I don't like doing video. I'm one of those photographers that actually went into it and was just like, yeah, I'll give it a go, fine, whatever. You guys work so hard. The hours you guys work is just so slow, laborious. You need to have so many people involved. It's just, 
speaking as a photographer who actually I tend to work kind of alone or have a digi or kind of digi and one assistant I have a very small crew you know my lighting style is very dark I have one light you know it's all quite moody my stuff I don't need you know hundreds of people kind of running around and stuff and I might you know I might have a makeup team or, or something small but you know my shoots tend to be 15 people max on videos it, it I don't like them at all. I mean, you know, it's just they take so much more time, and it's it's not that I'm lazy. It's not that I'm not happy to put the effort in because, yeah, you know, I've been working 36 hour days for God knows how long. Like with the, with some uh, shoots and driving all the way. 36 up to, hour days. Yeah, 36 Where, hour day. That must once. be in the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a time shift. <laughs> time shift. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Talk about jet lag. Oof. Oh, matter. Yeah, no. no. I drove all the way up to Scotland, did a job, then drove down, then drove up to Manchester. It was, yeah. Anyway, it was a rubbish day. Um, that's a, that's quite a long way. If yeah. You, yeah. If you know the UK, um, but yeah, I mean, there's. I think for photographers, I think there was this feeling of necessity. I think that as soon as kind of DSLRs kind of had the video function, everyone was like, oh my god. Well, I've got to learn video. I've got to do video. And we had it actually when the 300D came out. Years and years ago with photographers, everyone picked up a DSLR. So suddenly everyone became a photographer. So we had this influx of people thinking they could do our jobs. We had it years and years ago. So now the photographers are all picking up these video cameras and DSLRs with video and going, oh my God, yeah, no, I could shoot a, I could shoot a short, fine, whatever, you know. And they're, they're producing this really, really poor standard, which is great for people like you guys who are actually genuinely talented and who then, you know, the, the real quality work shines through. I mean, yes and no, because obviously I, I like that a lot of people have access to it now. Mm -hmm. And that means that a lot of talent surfaces that wouldn't have had the chance before because the gear was used to be so extremely expensive. It has all the cost. I down. mean, there was no way you could shoot, you know, there were like only 15 years ago, maybe 10 years ago, there wasn't a camera, a video camera with a large sensor. So that means you would end up having to rent a very expensive camera for a day. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly, you know, there were 35 millimeter adapters for smaller sensor cameras. Deletus. And then suddenly uh, there was the, yeah, the letters, for mm -hmm. example. And then suddenly the 5D popped up. We, everybody was like, okay, we need to get on this. Mm -hmm. Canon didn't get it for four years. <laughs> um, and then everybody else followed. And now we have gazillions of video cameras with a large sensor for a very affordable price. Well, I mean, we only need to look at the Fotokina announcements that every kind of camera that's being announced is kind of 4K capable or has 4K internal. Um, and so I do kind of feel sorry for all you video guys, because obviously I've been through this once before when everyone picked up a camera and suddenly was like, yeah, no, I'll do it. No, I'll do it for free. I yeah, mean, fine, no you shouldn't be scared of it. I mean, you know, it also opens a lot of pro possibilities. And just because oh, not, the technology is I'm available, doesn't mean that doesn't mean that anybody, you know, that everybody will take away your job or anything. No, you no, know? true. You just have to be. You have to w ride the wave. Mm -hmm. all if the I'm time. honest, I'm very <coughs> impatient. <coughs> so it's more probably the fact that people will come up to me and go, "How many megapixels has your camera's got?" <laughs> Great. Yeah, oh, do you like the? Again. Do you like somebody saying? It's a nice camera you get there. It makes really good photos. Yeah, oh my God. You, 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 know, you I must hear that have spent a like lot of money on that <laughs> camera. Great. No, it's not the 10 years of experience I put into the picture. God. Yeah, don't even get me started on that. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a whole can yeah. of worms. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. would add that it's that shooting uh, some, some video and then going back to stills, stills feels so easy. Yeah, mm. like it's like I can just walk around with a camera, a lens, maybe a off-camera flash and, and make really interesting images. Uh, in a really simple package, um, it's it's uh, can be daunting, I guess you could say. With and and th the thing that taught me the the most was, as a photographer, you're a photographer, right? You go out, you produce that image. You may have an assistant that helps with lights, but you're the photographer. Um, the thing I learned the quickest, I think, was I can't, I can no longer do it all myself. I need more people. I need talented people, and. Um, that was exciting because uh, incorporating people with specialties. For instance, uh, we did a GTEC spot in Hawaii, and I hired uh, a guy I'd known for a long time, but he, he shoots in the water. So I had a water specialist. We had an aerial specialist. Like, so all of a sudden, I get to bring my friends, who are also very talented in their own, their own way, into these projects and uh, collaborate, which is really exciting. And um, I think it's hard for some photographers to get over their own ego it's like it's not about me anymore Absolutely. it's about it's I could about not agree more yeah. on that it's, because it's yes. about our it's us as a team right yes. and it's not me who produces yeah. we produce this thing and uh i think that's the hardest thing to get over being you know because photographer is individualistic you mm -hmm. know cinema is 
Yes. You know, it's a team effort yeah. by definition. Basically. You're, you're never Absolutely. going to be able to do all of the all of the things on set that need to be done. Yeah. The sound, you know, camera operation, aerial, underwater, you know, just to name a few. See, I, th I think that's what went, I probably went wrong. I think I just tried to do everything. Kind of went in all those bar and I was like, yeah, why not? I can do everything on, on my regular shoots. Why can't I do everything on these? And then that's probably where my kind of lack of love for it has come, really, because I've just probably tried to be a one kind of one man band about it all. Yeah. Yeah. That's where those 36 hours days. Yeah. Come in. What about you, <laughs> Kiro? It's with been 48 as well. With video? I mean, with video. Yeah. I. I well, I, I should say we because my partner Lumi is not here. But we we actually started with video two or three years ago with a Canon 5D Mark II, and for us it was just a tool to document behind the scenes of photo shoots. So we started documenting and making actually tutorial-like, explanatory, educational videos, and this very slowly, gradually evolved into uh, something bigger like making may maybe a small uh, low budget documentary for a small video channel explaining uh, also about photography but for for me for us it, it is basically just a tool to show how we work which conditions we face and I completely uh, agree with Lucas here that it's the ego of photographers that actually it's not the equipment but it's uh, it's not the fact that there are so many mm, people picking up the gear uh, video enabled, 4K enabled stuff. No, it's just the ego that is just stopping the guys from really, you know, advancing and actually pitching at bigger clients. Because it, it w with a team, with a team of individuals who are trained, who are specialized, you can really make a bigger projects. And this, these are the sort of shortcomings also of my own ego. I realized I had the pleasure to work for on the production for Discovery Channel as a lector and as a presenter, uh, be a part of a TED talk where it was perfectly organized from, you know, video perspective, beautifully produced with 50 people running around, making sure everything is done properly. And then I just realized, uh, well, at the end of the day, all of these guys have a purpose. All of these guys make sure that in 41 seconds, I'm on the scene, uh, within 21 seconds, the feed goes live all over the world. And uh, it's recorded, it's cut properly, the audio is always perfect, no matter what I do. It makes sense, and, and this is what makes a difference between, you know, professionals working on high-end productions and delivering beautiful products and from a bunch of guys who are, have a big aspirations. But they will never deliver and they will never succeed. They will always get frustrated. Yeah. But, but once again, God goes down to ego uh, and understanding that, look, that stills and moving, well, they, they do, th there is some sort of, there is some sort of overlap, conceptual one, but these are two different worlds. Yeah, I think the biggest skill that you need to have in cinematography and filmmaking in general is a social skill, to be honest, because you deal with so many people all the time. And if you've ever been on a bigger film set, you immediately notice that one person can break the mood of an entire crew. And you probably know it from photography as well, but with film it's even worse because the crew is much bigger. Mm -hmm. So it really doesn't depend. It could be it's a Hollywood set sometimes, and you know, because somebody is problematic, be it an actor or an assistant director or director, it's terrible. And if the if the crew is great, it's the best experience of your life. It can be like you know, it's either that or the other, mm -hmm. in my experience. And. Um, yeah, that's it's and also obviously skill as well. I mean, it need to be a lot of skilled people on the job to make mm -hmm. it work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the that's I think the thing that I've noticed recently is with this all these jumps in technology, 4K, 8K, uh, high megapixels cameras. There's so much more uh, client um, teaching, I guess you could say, uh, helping people understand that maybe they don't need 8K for this shoot, or why would do you need 8K, or you know what. What, do you, what, is, what is your, what's your goal, you know, because people get these buzzwords, they hear things and they're like, they, they have an idea and they don't we necessarily. Have have oh, there's lots of noise, I agree, there is lots of noise and I'm going to be speaking now from this sort of scientist perspective yeah. because exactly, f for example, for phase one, what I'm going to be doing now is lots of photo, ed photo education. And there's lots of noise and lots of anxiety in people with the, with the big, well, we, we are just bombarded with information and I agree that. Uh, some of the most relevant sites on the web actually don't report any longer news, but filter out the news, translating to the to, to, to consumers what does it actually mean for you? What does the 4K mean for you? What what does this resolution mean? Not telling, giving a pixel count, but they're telling you that 
well, you can reframe it. Or what does the greater color bit actually gives you really? What does the 4 to 2 uh, chroma subsampling is with respect to 444? Yes, I mean, without scientific discussion, just explaining, look, there is a benefit, but only if. Yes, and I, I entirely agree that I also end up with the situations where people think, oh, you have a medium format now, so you can do this, you can do that. I explain, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's nice, it's great, but it's huge. So you, uh, you haven't figured out how to break the laws of science yet to, <laughs> to make better... Uh, What's wrong with you? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No, no, no. No, it's... it's, 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 it's I, I entirely yeah. agree. I explain to people that, look, you pay 40,000 euros for a camera system and it's nice and you will you will have this ridiculous sharpness. I was presenting photos, yeah. for example, at 400% with reflection of me and my body holding a light in uh, Lumi's eye, my partner's eye on the portrait photo. And people were like, Jesus Christ, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I explained, yeah, it is ridiculous. And there are applications where you need that. But most of the time, compress it to 20 megabytes. It, I'm sorry, 20 megapixels, and it's fine. It's okay. It's the dynamic range which is more important. And then I show them a photo of a climber against a very bright background and tell them, look, you push the slider. Look, I agree, but that's, works. that's exactly where we are in video right now. Everybody's yeah. hyping about 4K, yeah. but the truth is, what I really care about is dynamic, dynamic range. range. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, because right now we, ga you know, you guys are used to shooting RAW all the time. Mm -hmm. It's still a big issue in film and in, in cinematography because it's just the, m the amount of data mm -hmm. that you generate means that you cannot, you simply cannot shoot RAW for every project. I mean, if we shot this show on RAW, it would probably go out in 10 years. I look <laughs> better in raw, personally. You look better in raw? Yeah. That's good I, I need a little raw. <laughs> <laughs> no, that it, it doesn't make sense yeah. for 95% yeah. of my jobs. Mm -hmm. It does make sense for the rest, you know, th those 5% mm -hmm. which are high-end commercials or high-end whatever, or because, you know, I like the, the I need the dynamic range to get something out. But for most of the jobs, it doesn't, you know. So it's very important to have a logarithmic um, image from a video camera, which is actually compressed already, but it has the dynamic range still in the image mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah. that's where we are now and you know the, you know manufacturers are still talking about r resolution um mm. whereas yeah. i rather be talking about dynamic range but, but that exactly that's a very fair point this is why i mean for me also why sony is actually doing a great job now bringing these new sensors like people are complaining about this camera that's only 12 megapixel the cameras which are filming right now but on A7S, the other, yeah. yeah but <laughs> on the other yeah on the other hand uh, per pixel sharpness and per pixel sensitivity to a light is just groundbreaking. And at the end of the day, maybe for example, for in my case, fifty percent of the of the photos which I sold were long exposure photos, where I would benefit enormously from having a smaller system, even of a limited resolution, because nonetheless the files will be used electronically, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I entirely agree that there is that there is there is lots of there is lots of information lots of features being added and a great misconception about w what is actually the applicability of the features not only for professional photographer or media maker or or guy doing films but even for average consumer what could you while being educated achieve even with a standard consumer camera yes yeah. by being able to you know control the highlight for example and see that finally well the the, the skin tone looks better or see yeah. that reflections in the water actually are gone and it looks more and more interesting. Talking about resolution, do you guys, a lot of manufacturers of 4K cameras market, particular Red said that when the Red One came out and I think the Epic as well, um, that you could shoot video in 4K or 5K or whatever and then just take a still frame and use that as a photograph basically and that, you know, does that make any sense? Do you ever <laughs> do that? <laughs> well, well, <laughs> keep well, calm, keep exactly. calm. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, technically, I guess that would be possible. Um, I think that there's just not really a workflow at this point where that would be applicable on a, a real photo shoot, I guess, or um, ad shoot in that sense. I mean, mm -hmm. it, the workflow to go through every frame by frame by frame that raw footage and then export those as a TIFF yeah. or something would be, would be mind-blowing. Yeah, I've seen that on NAB. Red had a show with the fashion show, actually, remember? They had the fashion show with the models walking and there was a guy capturing live 6K frames and they had the big Epson printer and a few guys with calibrated screens printing the stuff and I've been there and, and the photos were looking okay but I mean I'm, I'm not a portrait photographer but for a geek guy and pixel paper I was not impressed but I don't want to talk about the quality. I, I completely agree with you Lucas that amount of time that these guys were investing in pulling the frames, scrubbing through this footage mm -hmm. 
that's ridiculous. Uh, second thing is uh, obviously focus. Very mm -hmm. often you you know you, people you, unless you photograph some sort of still nature or whatever people move. You need mm -hmm. to recompose all the time. You need to refocus. You want to yeah. fix focus on the eye. I don't know what a feature that you're interested. In. I mean, mm -hmm. imagine doing that at you know 25 frames per second and keeping the focus manual, even with the best focus overlay. I mean. Just from the sake of a m from marketing point of view, uh, yeah, it, it it will work. It will it it makes sense. But from the practical point of view, I yeah. that just becomes impossible. Uh, obviously, in a, in a video sequence, we're not noticing somebody's a little out of focus as they walk out of the frame or something. It's not bothering us. But yeah. in a, as a still photograph, it's it's blaring and 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 latent. It will be so that's, that's not yeah. a shot anymore. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly. exactly. That's and yeah. oh, well, if that was the shot that was yeah. the still where they had the emotion and they like the, the perfect look, well then that's mm -hmm. a whole other thing. And that's where, um, you know, and, uh, uh, back in the the early days of digital photographers were like, oh, we're going to lose our jobs to to cinematographers because all of a sudden they're just going to be pulled that one frame out of there, and you know you won't need photographers anymore. Well. That someday there will be that technology, I'm sure, where that it'll be easy to do that. But I think at least for the next <coughs> week or so, our jobs are safe. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> purely <laughs> from a physical point of standpoint, it doesn't it doesn't work because you always end up having the same shutter speed because that's yeah. the nature of video. But unless I mean, you shoot at high shutter rates to uh, achieve an effect, but if you do that, you probably end up not being able to use the video yeah, footage you anymore. You so you destroy what's the, the video, of all of a sudden you've got like yeah. one thousandth of a second video which looks like junk. Exactly. It's like you've just shot it and From yeah. the first point of view though, without being funny, like some of the shots that I have to do, I'm shooting at ISO fifty, F twenty two. The amount of light that you'll need to bring out, constant light, the power, I mean I'm sure the power's there, but the heat that will come off it. Mm. Your subject will melt. They'll look like crap. Like, without being funny, I'm sure the technology will one day exist, but until they can find a light that is so powerful and completely cool, it's not a relevant technology as far as I'm yeah. concerned. Like, as far as my style of photography goes, I'm not even looking at it. Like, yeah. it's just, it's just an, it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's kind of a non-discussion because the, the subject heat and how, how close I have the lights to my yeah. subjects and stuff, it's just, it's just not, it's just not going to work. Yeah. Like, they, they literally, they look awful. The, with the sweat and the melting face, and it's, it's not. It's not strong. Nobody work. likes melting face. No one likes <laughs> melting face. Thanks for watching this segment of Cinema 5D on the couch with Camille, Tom, and Lucas. And if you want to hear more from them, tune in for the next segment. Also, thanks to our sponsors: Chi Technology, Rode Microphones, Movidium.com, Room Convert, and F&B. Thanks for watching.